proper egress on and off scaffolds is critical. Always use the designated access to scaffolds at all times. This may include fixed ladders, walkways, stairway towers, and man lifts. Do not take shortcuts to save time. My name is Ed Sanchez, President of Scaffold Solutions. There's a few topics for accessing scaffold that we'd like to discuss. It's usually one of the most important starting points and one of the most hazardous. Okay, when accessing scaffolds uh, on this ladder system or external ladders, there, we have discussed about the three points of contact. Two hands, one foot, two feet, one hand. Very important that you maintain your balance and not get inhibited with tools or other accessories that will prevent you from accessing the ladder properly. When accessing the scaffold through a ladder or internal hatch system, you can pop your hatch, keep your hands clear, put your tools on the next level, and then climb the ladder. The other option is the pulley system. Always use a secured bag or other containment that is functional that can handle your load. A bucket is not a good idea. The top man always take your bag, your secured containment, and bring it inboard of your rail system. Take your tools out, set it back over the edge, as long as you're in constant communication with the rope man. This is never a single man operation. Okay, stair towers are a very common access to a building. Getting your tools up there is also still a problem. Always maintain one free hand for your handrail, use your other hand to carry your tools, and if an extra trip is necessary, use it. The loading bays and pre-planning is always your best recipe for success. If you try to shortcut, go into an area that is not ready for it, that is not prepared for it or engineered for it, you will exceed those load values. It's a recipe for disaster. Okay, frame scaffolds have a weight limit. They're typically on a wood plank system, 10 foot bay, rated to 25 pounds maximum pounds per square foot. Loading becomes an issue. You have to get your material to your workplace. This takes a little bit of planning, a little bit of foresight, so you don't overload your location. Another component to considering load factors is the amount of ties to your scaffold. In other words, how do we secure the scaffolding to the substructure? There's multiple ways between tie wire, fixed all thread, kickers, permanent welded components, now in doing so, again, this is part of your loading plan. If you exceed the 25 pounds per square foot minimum manufacturer's recommendation, you're putting more weight on that scaffold than what is intended. Somebody has to come up and review that and take a look at those ideas. If you alter the tie-ins in any manner, particularly under loaded conditions, high winds, weather, you're now compromising the system. Always inspect your planks, particularly wood. You have a combination of laminated style, pine style, and at sometimes you will see people put the wrong type of material in there. It is your responsibility to inspect your work platform each day. At the end of the erection process with your scaffolding, it's a very high recommendation that you do a joint inspection, not only by the contractor, but by the erector and your end user. Always take that extra time that a little bit of extra energy and effort and be safe. Another component to a safe successful project is always good housekeeping. A lot of people forget that just does not go to the interior. Good housekeeping, particularly on scaffold, is a critical issue. You don't want items falling, being kicked, pushed, moved, or somehow going downhill and injuring somebody. Part of your inspection process at the end of the day or at the end of completion of your, pro of your scaffolding is allowing people to know if you have a safe or unsafe condition. Is the scaffold ready to use or is it not? At each access point you're going to have a red tag or a green tag. Obviously very simple. Red don't go, green it is clear. This is established by the competent person after they have inspected the scaffolding and approved it ready for use. Do not take these off at any time without advising or discussing with your safety director, your safety personnel, or making commu proper communication to the rest of the staff and construction project that it is either safe or unsafe. One of the most common ways to get on and off a scaffold is by an access ladder. Before using any ladder, here are a few safety guidelines to acknowledge. 
We're talking about ladders and ladders on a job site and how they might interface with our scaffold. Again, it's very important that when we select a ladder to do a job, we select the right ladder. One of the most critical things we need is a ladder that will extend three foot above our access and egress point. As you can see from this little sample ladder here, we're only extending about eight inches above the, the platform or the access and egress point. We need to make sure that this extends three foot above the roof line or above the access line. When we get on and off of a ladder, of course, what we're doing is we're transferring our load. We're actually pushing the ladder away from us. That's why it's so critical that we tie off the ladder as soon as, as soon as possible. There are a number of things out in the field, out in the industry, that can make a ladder safer. Uh, we have uh, ladder levelers, ladder extensions that will allow us to then step off of a ladder instead of around the outside going through the middle of the ladder. Again, as we approach a job, we want to make sure that as we set the ladder up, it's on a firm level surface. Uh, right now, for instance, I've set the ladder up on extension cords. We should never set up a ladder on anything like this. And if we can, let's go ahead and kick those out of the way. If when we get to the job, uh, our ladder, as you can see, is not perpendicular with our work. We need to have this ladder has a set of ladder leveling legs. There are many, many ladder leveling legs in the industry, but what's nice about this is we can adjust this ladder very quickly and very easily so that it's now perpendicular to our work surface. Instead of putting bricks or two by fours or two by sixes under a ladder, we want to use an approved ladder leveling device. When we're leaning the ladder up against, a, for instance, a scaffold, we need to identify our access and egress point so that we can tie the ladder off. Uh, we don't want to be moving this from point to point, and we don't want to be leaning this against a mid-rail of, for instance, a mid-rail on a scaffold. We want to be making sure this is uh, on a secure uh, surface. Another uh, thing we want to make sure is that the ladder is at the proper angle, approximately four to one. So if this ladder, for instance, were going up 20 feet, it would be about five feet away. A good way to test that is to put your feet at the base of the ladder, stand with your hands at the rung closest to your shoulders, and that's approximately the right angle um, for, for using a ladder. Four to one, firm level surface, and a proper, uh, engaging point on the on the surface you're going to be climbing on and off of. Another portion of scaffolding that is often overlooked are rolling units and the very simple rules that would apply to them. Number one, never ride a rolling unit. Always dismount, always lock your wheels, Always secure any tools that are, or material that are up on your working platform. Always look where you are rolling, particularly in tarped floors, that you don't have any holes, any trenches, or anything that will create the rolling unit to become unbalanced. Not only are you looking on the ground for obstructions, but you also need to look overhead. Sprinkler lines, electrical lines, lighting, anything that may be in the same plane as your handrails or any other obstruction that can prevent your move. In addition to rolling units, as a scaffold contractor, it's our recommendation you do not ride on the rolling units as they are being moved. Please follow all Cal OSHA regulations and any other job specific requirements. It is required for you to wear your personal protective equipment or PPE. The basic PPE includes a hard hat, safety glasses, and work boots at all times. A hard hat worn properly will prevent most head injuries to yourself. Some jobs require additional PPE to be worn, such as personal fall protection equipment. Your supervisor will instruct you if this is necessary. Always check with your supervisor before you begin work if you are unsure. Please implement and follow the safety guidelines addressed in this video. 
Remember to take your time and pay attention while working on scaffolding. This video was designed to provide you with an overview of safety measures. It is not a comprehensive safety program. If you have any questions or concerns, please discuss these with your supervisor. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.